go from factorial loser to factorial super genius with this smart but simple emergency low power combinator build. I'm gonna test your mental coordination with a little sit down. In the comments section of my inserter tutorial video, Pete K was wondering about how to set up an SR latch using combinators that will turn on the steam engines only in a low power emergency. In electronics, a SR latch is a level sensitive circuit that has two stable states. In Pete K's case, he was specifically looking for when accumulator power falls below 10%, the first state, he wants the steam engines to turn on and remain on until accumulator power gets back up to 35%, the second state. However, when accumulator power gets to 35%, he wants the SR latch to reset and shut the steam engines down. But what's the point of doing all that? Well, Lawrence, here's a simplified factory I created so that even you could understand. In this setup, there is steam engine electricity production, solar electricity production, four stack inserters doing busy work that will act as the factory load, and most importantly, little fishies. Watching this simplified factory over one full in-game day cycle, we see that at no point does the steam engine turn off. Not even during the day when brightness is at 100%. And at night, the accumulator doesn't get a chance to discharge any of its stored up electricity even though the solar panel's output is zero. So what's the problem with that? So, it means your solar panel and accumulator build isn't contributing as much as it could. Despite your best efforts, your boilers are still being fed fuel even though the accumulators are sitting there idle and completely charged up. Wouldn't it be great if your steam engines only turned on when your accumulators were critically low on power? So, what can we do about it? Well, with only two combinators along with a few logic wires, we can use a circuit network to turn off the steam engines when your solar and accumulator build has enough power to cover your entire factory. But before we start, let's take a quick look at the latest change to accumulator. With the release of 0.13, accumulators gain the ability to output into the circuit network their charge level as a percentage. Accumulators now have a GUI that can be opened with a left click. You can easily select any item in the game as a signal by left clicking in the signal window and then left clicking on the game item you'd like to use for your signal. In this example, we're going to go ahead and stick with the A signal. Okay, now we got that out of the way, let's get started with this bit. First, place down a single decider combinator. Open the decider combinator GUI by left clicking on it. Then left click in the first window on the parameters panel which will open the select the signal interface. Left click on the A signal. In the next window we can select a less than, greater than, or equal sign by left clicking. In this case we will left click until we see the less than sign. In the next window to the right we will enter the number 10. This is done by left clicking in the window going down to the or set a constant panel highlighting the zero with your mouse cursor, and then typing in the number 10. You can also use the slider bar to set a constant, but in most cases, I usually just type in a number. Next, set the output by again left clicking in the window and select the A signal. Then, you'll want to left click on the radio button with the number one next to it. Next, we need to place down an arithmetic combinator. We set this as follows. Left click on the combinator to open its GUI. Down in the input panel, left click in the first window and again select signal A. We then have the option of selecting either the addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division mathematical operators. Using the left mouse button, select a multiplication operation which looks like an asterisk. Click on the next window and enter a constant value of negative 25 in the exact same way we entered a 10 with the decider combinator. Finally, in the output panel, we will again left click and select the A signal. Well, that was the hard part. Now all we have to do is connect some red and green wires and we'll be finished. Connect a green wire from the output of the decider combinator to the input of the arithmetic combinator. Then connect a red wire from the output of the arithmetic combinator to the input of the decider combinator. Next, connect a red wire from the accumulator to the input of the decider combinator. Now, 
string along some red wires from the output of the decider combinator to the offshore pumps that service your boilers. Finally, set your offshore pumps such that signal A is equal to 1. This is done in the exact same way we did it for the accumulator and the combinators. It's as simple as that. We're all done. If you'd like to observe the signal output from the accumulator, you can run an additional red wire from the accumulator to a power pole. Then hover your cursor over the power pole and you can watch the accumulator's capacity rise and fall in the drop-down window that appears under the minimap. We also can hover over this power pole that connects the output of the decider combinator to the offshore pump and see exactly when signal A with a value of 1 is outputted. We know it has a value of 1 by looking in the lower right hand corner of the signal. Here are a few additional notes regarding this build. The steam engine will run for a few seconds after the A signal is removed as it uses up any remaining hot water. So don't be worried if the steam engine doesn't turn off right away. Also, only one accumulator in your entire factory needs to be connected to the input of your decider combinator. Just make sure all your accumulators are connected to the same electrical system as your steam engines. Connecting multiple accumulators with red or green logic wires increases their output by a factor of one for each accumulator added. For example, here I've added two more accumulators, disconnected the inserters by turning off the power switch, and let all the accumulators charge to 100%. If we connect all the accumulators with a red wire, we now read a signal A of 300 and not 100. This will throw off your SR latch's set and reset values. So keep this in mind. At this point, if you're still watching and conscious, let's go through an example and figure out why this works. Suppose signal A from the accumulator reads 9. This decider combinator will read that numerical value of 9 coming in off the A signal. Since 9 is less than 10, the decider combinator will output an A signal with a numerical value equal to 1. This A signal, again equal to 1, then simultaneously goes to both the input of the arithmetic combinator via the green wire and to the offshore pump, which turns on the steam engines. Now, looking at the GUI of the arithmetic combinator, since the A signal is equal to 1, multiplying 1 by negative 25 equals negative 25. So the arithmetic combinator's output has a numerical value of negative 25. Following the arithmetic combinator's output along this red wire to the input of the decider combinator, the two A signals, the one from the accumulator and the one from the output of the arithmetic combinator, are added together. In the split second it takes for all this to occur, the value of 9 from the accumulator is added to the negative 25 from the arithmetic combinator. This sums to a value of negative 16. This value of negative 16 is then directed into the decider combinator on the A signal. Since negative 16 is still less than 10, the decider combinator's A signal output remains steady with a value of 1. This sequence of operations will continue up to the point where the signal from the accumulator reaches 35. To the negative 25 from the output of the arithmetic combinator, we now get an input signal into the decider combinator of 10, which of course is not less than 10, so our parameter is now false. The decider combinator will, in effect, then output a value of 0 on the A signal. To be exact, when the parameter is false, the decider combinator puts out no signal whatsoever, which is why when we hover over one of these power poles, a signal is not present in the dropdown. With the say signal now equaling 0, the output then has to be 0 since negative 25 times 0 equals 0. This 0 riding on the A signal is now transmitted to the decider combinator input along with the value of 35 from the accumulator. Adding 35 to 0 still produces 35. Because 35 is greater than 10, the signal outputted by the decider combinator remains 0. And an output signal from the decider combinator equal to zero ensures the offshore pump remains off until the accumulator charge, once again, drops below 10%. Then the process starts all over. Pretty neat, huh? Here's some final notes I have for this bit. 
In practice, I would probably set up the SR latch next to my steam engine setup and run a red wire from the closest available accumulator, but that's just my personal preference. Additionally, you can wire up all your offshore pumps to the same SR latch by connecting a red wire directly from one pump to another if it will reach. If it doesn't reach, you can always insert a power pole in between and run the wires that way. I hope this helps you understand a little bit more about how you can build using the circuit network. I'm definitely going to use this build in my far-flung factorial campaign. If you have any questions or would like to see something specifically covered in a future episode of Combinator Classroom, please leave a comment below. If you enjoyed this video or learned something new, I know I did, then hit that like button. And if you're not already a subscriber, be sure to subscribe so you can keep up to date on all this factorial goodness. But no matter what you do, make sure you get out there, start experimenting, and take control of your factory. We'll see you next time. Be good. No fishies were hurt or killed in the making of this video.